Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz, and today we're going to be taking a look at ex-tropical cyclone Megan, who made landfall last night as a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone. Then we're going to take a look at some torrential rainfall forecast for the Cape York Peninsula, and then we're going to take a look at a Coral Sea tropical low and the West Australian cyclone situation. So quite a lot to get through in today's weather update. Starting things off, of course, with tropical cyclone Megan, you can see she is still blowing up some impressive convective activity over the Northern Territory as she moves down deeper inland now, now below category one status and weakening rapidly uh, still, but looking fairly decent on the satellite imagery as well. You can see a lot of the inflow convection that has been surrounding the tropical cyclone is now also moving further inland and becoming more and more disconnected from the coastline. And the steady rainfall that we did see around Cairns yesterday, that's gonna be replaced with more heavy and sporadic shower and thunderstorm activity over the next 24 hours, where spoiler alert, up to 400 millimeters could fall across parts of the day tree and uh, Cairns area. Now taking a look at Cyclone Megan, you can skip around to what part of the video interests you the most in the chapter section of the description or in the scroll bar just below uh, where I'm talking. So. Uh, you can do that to whatever suits you, but you can see ex-tropical cyclone Megan suffered at the hands of wind shear just before landfall. Uh, the structure was really stripped back to the bone, and that's why it was a weakening system upon its landfall. And I did highlight this as a possibility yesterday, uh, and it certainly did happen in um, all of its glory. And that's why the system wasn't a Category 4 strength storm, as some might have predicted uh, as it made landfall, and it was more sort of a weaker Category 3 strength tropical cyclone. Still, though, making landfall with winds of 100 115 kilometers an hour sustained with wind gusts higher to 155 kilometers an hour on center island which wouldn't have been the strongest that the storm had to offer so certainly still a category three strength severe tropical cyclone now over the next uh 24 to 48 hours it will continue to dump quite a significant amount of rainfall over parts of the northern territory it is still a slow moving system but it's a lot further inland than initially thought so it's not going to have access to the moisture that's in the gulf of carpentaria as much so as it would have if it was close to the coastline Still, though, throughout the course of today, areas between uh, Burulula, Elliot, and Corella Creek, I know it's an incredibly remote part of Australia, but for cattle stations in that area or gold mines in that area, certainly do have the potential to receive up to 300 millimetres throughout the course of the next 24 hours. Um, and then the significant 100 to 200 millimetre totals will persist throughout Wednesday and into Thursday into communities such as Docker River, Tennant Creek, and Wave Hill, that sort of area. Uh, some very significant rainfall totals, that's for sure. We can be seeing some uh, accumulations, peak accumulations, as I said, you're talking about 300 millimetres uh, in the worst case scenario and maybe widespread 150 to 200 millimetres uh, for the remainder of uh, parts of the Central Northern Territory. Nothing too crazy, but again, it is still some very significant rainfall and will cause some flash flooding and maybe even some riverine flooding across Central Australia as well. The storm is also expected to double back um, by around Friday and Saturday. It's going to be quite slow moving or it's remnant and energy will be very slow moving over the Northern Territory and it will promote a lot of thunderstorm activity towards the end of this week and into this weekend before it moves or this thunderstorm activity looks like it's going to move towards uh, South Australia and New South Wales and it could spark a bit of a thunderstorm event across parts of Queensland, South Australia and maybe into New South Wales as well. That was certainly what was on the forecast yesterday, not so much today. I think the axis is still a little bit more fond of that situation maybe not by the looks of things but uh, nonetheless, still, uh, Central Australia could receive a drenching from the remnants of this tropical cyclone. We're talking up to 400 millimetres in a worst case scenario, but it's probably going to be more so widespread, uh, two to 300 millimetres or at least above 100 millimetres across a lot of the Northern Territory from thunderstorms um, after around Thursday or so. The closer you get to the Gulf of Carpentary coastline, the more consistent the rainfall will be and the more likely it's going to occur today. But as you start to get into this weekend, deeper into the Northern Territory, you're going to be looking at up to uh, maybe the 150 millimeters from thunderstorm. So more unpredictable rainfall. Alice Springs itself expecting up to 200 millimeters of rainfall. The Bureau of Meteorology not fully on board with that yet, so it's kind of hard to make a definitive call on how much rainfall Alice Springs will receive. Uh, but still, it will be interesting to see what happens there. Ayers Rock itself could receive anywhere within the ballpark of zero to 200 millimeters as well. So a very high degree of uncertainty the deeper you get into the Northern Territory desert uh, as you get further the south 
Anyways, that basically does it for coverage on X Tropical Cyclone Megan today. There'll be more information on it tomorrow as it uh, slowly moves through the Northern Territory. We're going to go up north now and take a look at the situation around Cairns, uh, Innisfail, and that sort of area because right now it does look like the rainfall has briefly eased off. Yeah, the rainfall has briefly eased off up there. There's still some uh, on and off uh, moderate to heavy falls coming from uh, showers and thunderstorms streaming in uh, from the coastline. That's kind of been the case for the past 12 hours, but the rainfall is certainly starting to ease off there. It definitely does look like today will be drier than yesterday and we might get a couple of days of dry weather in the form of today and maybe even into tomorrow as well. Still though, there will be places that pick up um, up to 100 millimetres today as always up in this part of um, Australia. It's a very, very wet part of Australia, the wettest part of Australia in fact, uh, so that we can't be writing off those big rainfall totals from occurring over the next 24 to 48 hours. But it's going to be with A, the development of another tropical on around eight days time, which we're watching still because it has been on the forecast for about three days. I don't think it's going to happen, but I will still talk about it and its potential impacts. But we're also looking out for a bit of a trough to occur um, that's going to be pulling in moisture from the uh, Coral Sea, the Solomon Sea, right across to the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Megan as she tracks across the Northern Territory. And we're going to be seeing a lot of rainfall occur over the, a lot of moisture occur over the, um, what is it, the Coral Sea, and that is going to turn into rainfall as it streams ashore throughout Wednesday. Um, uh, and it should ease off by Thursday, but especially areas further up on the um, Cape York Peninsula will be receiving rainfall for the rest of the week before it slowly eases off this weekend and becomes more of that pulse thunderstorm sort of activity. But it definitely looks like throughout um, this evening and then into tomorrow, a lot of rainfall will be falling between Cairns and Innisfail. And if we were to take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next three days, that's reciprocated with rainfall accumulation, you're talking up to around 250 millimetres uh, for areas around what could be fish falls and then as you get up towards Port Douglas here maybe up to 300 millimeters the ECMWF model is generally fairly reliable especially in the uh, short term so I see no reason to doubt these numbers right now the Axis G3 just a little bit more bullish in terms of rainfall and it's spread around the Cassowary coast and they're also calling for a lot more rainfall in the 10 day forecast period um, the Axis G3 isn't so keen on that coral sea tropical low from developing um, as you get up to um, towards early next week, but they're still keen on a lot of rainfall moving through as a result of that uh, tropical those energy kind of being there. In short, expect something to kind of ex uh, attempt to spit up her in the Coral Sea, uh, like we did see with Tropical Low 10U. I know that that really didn't come on the forecast until quite late. Well, Tropical Cyclone Megan was late when we had 10U on the forecast for around 12 days, but Tropical Low 10U really took its time to develop and was only around for about 12 hours, but it certainly did uh, give the um, Cape York Peninsula, a lot of rainfall. It drenched it, it did in the 12 hours that it was around for. And in fact, it was around earlier than that. And it was providing a lot of rainfall across the Cape York Peninsula um, earlier than the 12 hour lifespan that it uh, did have. Uh, but still though, uh, we will need to be watching this tropical low very closely because if anything does attempt to form in the Coral Sea, it will likely result in a lot of rainfall for far northern Queensland. And let's just take a look at this potential system right now on the Eastern Rear Forecast model. As we start to get into Sunday, um, what's that, the 24th of March, you can already see a textbook sort of tropical low pattern starting to develop with the wind starting to swirl around the southern side of the system and tighten themselves up just off the Queensland coastline. And that happens more evidently through uh, Wednesday when we start to see the monsoon uh, kind of pick up across Papua New Guinea. It's really, really weak at this time. Uh, I'm certainly struggling. The Axis G3 does actually have a fully blown tropical low starting to develop uh, by the middle of next week into later next week. And the GFS model as well, I also belief has something, yeah, it does have something trying to develop either in the Gulf of Carpentaria or in the Coral Sea. Nonetheless, if this storm does develop and it's got very, very weak signals and very slim chances right now, it will not be a tropical cyclone. It'll be a very, very weak system. It's just going to be there for the rainfall threat, and that is why I am covering it. Um, the chances that I would give this system developing right now would probably be at around 20% of becoming a tropical low. Uh, definitely a 0% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone, but it's still a hot chance of providing a very significant amount of rainfall for locations between Townsville up to uh, any other area, basically on the Cape York Peninsula. And this is kind of your early warning for potential rainfall next week, Monday onwards, where you could be seeing a lot of rainfall across areas of the Cape York Peninsula that will be impacted by this developing tropical low threat. Um, the fact that the GFS does actually have something spinning off uh, by next Thursday in the Gulf of Carpentaria and spinning itself up uh, quite nicely, actually, by the looks of things, or it's actually up here near Thursday Island at this point, uh, means 
teams that will have to be watching the um, Coral Sea and the Gulf of Carpentaria very co closely um, over the coming couple of days and to see what happens towards uh, Easter. But again, I'm really not sold on anything major occurring throughout the Coral Sea, uh, especially not in the remainder that we have for tropical cyclone season, that's for sure. Uh, cyclone season in the um, Coral Sea will be wrapping itself up as we get in towards April. Western Australia generally has another month or month and a half on top of what the Coral Sea gets, but still, again, the fact that we haven't had a single tropical cyclone there is really something and that leads me very nicely into the west australian system if we take a look at the wind forecast uh, the um, wind forecast the satellite imagery right now in the system it actually looks really healthy now get this the joint typhoon warning center completely dropped the system last night why does that matter well that is the american forecast agency that tracks systems everywhere outside of the atlantic basin and the mediterranean sea now the joint typhoon warning center dropping the system is a classic example of uh, just them being stupid they're actually a very stupid forecasting agency they've dropped a bunch of systems before and i'm not bashing them but i, I genuinely don't understand the way the criterion that they have for these tropical lows because this looks very healthy this does if the imagery wasn't so framey but just take a look at it it actually looks really quite healthy it's blowing up consistent convection thunderstorm activity over its center and it's swirling around very nicely it's also got some very healthy cloud tops as well so this system is probably closer to becoming a tropical cyclone the tropical cyclone Megan was as she formed um, and I'm surprised that uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center completely dropped it. They're about as useful as the Bureau of Meteorology these days. And the Bureau of Meteorology with Tropical Cyclone Megan was actually quite hopeless in the sense that it was on the forecast to be a strong tropical cyclone for a couple of days and then it, it, the Bureau of Meteorology really didn't pick up on it until it was basically on top of the Northern Territory coastline. And I mean, just a couple more days of warning, just about the potential that the system had, that would have been very much welcome to a lot of the residents up there who were kind of caught off guard um, and... You know, we're not going to know the full scope of the damage from Megan until at least a couple of days from now, uh, but still certainly going to be a damaging system in terms of p uh, potential property damage that it would have caused to some areas up in the uh, far northern reaches of the Northern Territory and the Queensland. Now, this system does actually have a promising future. It's um, got the potential to become a strong tropical cyclone. We're talking probably category three or four status here, but it's probably not going to do it um, anywhere in the West Australian region, in the Australian region at all. It's going to take its merry time to develop into a tropical cyclone, probably going to become a fully-fledged tropical cyclone as per the wind forecast by around Friday and the 22nd, and it will um, intensify probably quite fast throughout Saturday and Sunday, but there is a chance that the system completely fails to intensify until around Sunday or so, and then by now it's getting very, very close to the um, border between the Australian region and the Southwest Indian Ocean region, and if it doesn't become a tropical cyclone by Sunday evening, which it should do if it's going to become a tropical cyclone it will happen before sunday evening it's not going to become a tropical cyclone in the west australian region and that will just extend our near record drought that we've been seeing uh, in terms of tropical cyclone activity uh, for the west australian region now what's also interesting is it's expected to combine into what looks to be a big cold front by tuesday and wednesday um, which should deliver the first winter fronts to the perth area uh, or the southwest region of western australia by around easter time coincidentally so it looks like the Easter long weekend might be a bit shoddy weather-wise. It's certainly not going to be hot, that's for sure. Uh, so we, again, need to be watching this forecast quite closely because it will actually have dramatic ramifications for the weather forecast uh, for Western Australia, regardless of where it tracks. Uh, so again, that's quite interesting. The Axis G3 does have a much stronger system than what the Eastern Relief is expecting. Well, they did yesterday, and they don't anymore, that's for sure. Uh, they're calling for it to develop into a tropical cyclone, probably by around Friday, but again, it's going to be very touch and go with how the Bureau of Meteorology classifies tropical cyclones. Um, so it's going to be a system that uh, might not form at all. I'm giving it a 70% chance of formation at this time, but again, it's going to be something that I'm going to watch very closely, and I would not be shocked if this system completely fails to form. There will be plenty more coverage on this system over the coming couple of days, plus the Coral Sea uh, storm as well, and also the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Megan and what she does. That basically does it for this morning's weather update. I would like to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors, their names on the screen right now. Thank you guys, your support greatly 
Uh, appreciated, that's for sure. Um, if there's any questions or comments regarding the state of the climate right now, leave them in the comment section down below. If you've got weather reports for your location, also leave them in the comment section down below. I've noticed that 90% of my viewership is not subscribed, so if you could subscribe and really bump that number up, that would be fantastic. Um, I know this channel really isn't about growth, it is about getting the weather out there, but I do really appreciate the support and all of the nice words that I read every single day. So I do want to thank you guys very, very much. Thank you for the recent support on the channel, of course, as well. You'll be watching these systems over the coming couple of days, seeing what they do, seeing what they mean for the Australian coastlines, and seeing what weather impacts they're going to be bringing to the audience over the coming week to 10 days. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.